Welcome to MoGuard TV. I'm your host, Tech Sergeant Tracy Howells. In this episode, we'll show how the Guard is a team, a family, and a force. We'll check in with the 175th Military Police Battalion as they prepare for a large-scale exercise in Poland. Then, we'll follow a team of four sharpshooters as they compete in the annual Tag Match Marksmanship Competition. We'll drop by a drill weekend for the 1138th Transportation Company as they take part in driver training. Then, we'll head to Rosecrans Air National Guard Base as airmen take part in a tactics and leadership course. And finally, we'll hear a story of how one soldier's guard family stepped up to lend him a hand. In our first story, we'll learn how the 175th Military Police Battalion is preparing for a rare overseas training opportunity with our NATO allies. More than 400 soldiers from the Missouri National Guard's 175th Military Police Battalion will be participating in a multinational exercise in Poland in June. The event, known as Exercise Anaconda, is one of U.S. Army Europe's premier multinational training events. It is a Polish national exercise that seeks to train, exercise, and integrate Polish national forces into an allied, joint, multinational environment with more than 25,000 participants from 24 nations. The, the big piece of it is the showing of force to uh, our, our NATO allies and, and the European community um, that uh, there's a lot of partners and a lot of good things that can happen. The role of the MP units under the 175th will be to support the convoys from the participating nations by handling security detail and assisting with traffic control and route navigation. I think it definitely shows that we can put together a multinational force. It shows that our partners will arrive on time at the right place and that we can get them from point A to point B in an organized fashion. As two of the units under the 175th, the 2175th Military Police Company from Hannibal and the 3175th Military Police Company from Mexico, Missouri, spent a recent drill weekend continuing to prepare for the upcoming exercise. Making sure that our soldiers are ready to deploy, ensuring that soldiers are qualified with regard to training, medical qualifications, administrative restrictions, etc., that allow them to participate. You don't want to read yeah. out it now because it's not good. Yeah. Right. What makes this exercise unique for the units under the 175th is that they will be shipping all of their own equipment, including over 100 vehicles, to Poland by sea. So the, really the challenge was meeting our logistical deadlines and our requirements to have equipment identified, inspected, loaded, and ready to go. Well, there's all kinds of um, contracts and moving parts and getting the equipment down to Beaumont, Texas to the port, ensuring a good handoff to the port authorities that are going to ship the equipment. The learning process of getting ready to deploy is just as important as the time that will be spent in Poland. So what this forces us to do is to exercise the logistical planning piece of it. Uh, we will have made some mistakes, uh, we'll have missed something, uh, we'll be able to document that. And in the event of an actual mobilization, a uh, combat-oriented mobilization, we'll have those lessons learned in our playbook so we won't make the same mistakes uh, when it really counts. Not all of the preparations for an overseas training exercise involve the packing up of assets. There are a lot of uh, different aspects to getting ready for deployment. There's a ton of admin that you have to do, including classes for anti-terrorism, cyber security, um, personal security, keeping your personal information secure so they don't lose that. The opportunity to take part in a European training exercise with many other nations is a new and exciting endeavor for many of the soldiers under the 175th. I've never actually been out of the country, so this is actually very exciting for me. Um, I've always wanted to, so this is a great opportunity for me to go with my unit and enjoy 
working overseas. It'll be a new experience and um, especially training with all the different units that, that are going to be there. It'll be a good learning experience for sure. You don't always have an opportunity to do an overseas deployment. It's not been available for many, many years. We still tell stories about us going to Panama back in the you know mid-90s. So I'm hoping there will be many, many soldiers that kind of look back and say, yeah, the cool thing about the Guard is I've been here, I've been there. And, and you know, someday they'll be able to tell their grandkids or sons or daughters or whatever, yeah, I was there, I was right there. I can tell you all about that place. Our next story takes us to Camp Crowder in Neosho, Missouri, where soldiers and airmen spent the weekend taking part in the annual Tag Match Marksmanship Competition. The Missouri National Guard held its annual 2016 Tag Match, a statewide marksmanship competition that takes place at Camp Crowder in Neosho, Missouri. During the competition, Missouri Guardsmen compete against one another individually and as four-person teams. The top three marksmen are each awarded with a trophy and the top 20 marksmen earn the right to wear the coveted Adjutant General's 20 combat badge. And if you're number one and everybody knows you're number one, there's a great deal of respect that goes with that. Not only respect in your individual unit, but across the entire state. Because every senior command is represented, the Air Guard is represented, and they all know who the best of the best is. The three-day competition evaluates the Guardsmen's marksmanship skills with a pistol, shotgun, and rifle. The competition includes timed events, moving targets, and firing while wearing a chemical protective mask. Mogar TV was embedded with a four-person team from the 110th Maneuver Enhancement Brigade Higher Headquarters Company based in Kansas City and followed them during the final two days of the competition. Sergeant Major Barnes was the most experienced shooter on the team, with more years of experience than a majority of his competitors have been alive. I've been shooting for about 37 years with the Guard in different disciplines. Well, if it'll do it hey, just go with it. Shots. Go with it. Yeah. You get them all there, you're good. Yeah, I like that. Master Sergeant Belts, our team captain, has been, uh, since I've been shooting with him for two years. You're the one that gathers the information, disseminates the information, and then learns from each one of your team members. As a team leader, you gotta be willing to listen to those who have been doing it for a while. How else can you get smarter in what you're doing? Master Sergeant Belt was responsible for selecting the team members, two of which, Major Payton and Sergeant Major Barnes, have a higher military rank than a master sergeant. What he says goes. But then on the other hand too, they do know that, hey, Sergeant Major says something or the Major says something, we all take it into consideration. Major Payton is our officer. He's a good officer, knows how to shoot, and just brings a nice even keel to the team. The lowest ranking member of the team was Staff Sergeant DeMint. Staff Sergeant DeMint, he's our, our quiet, steady, rock solid one. He never has a bad score, and he just stays good and even, which is what you need team-wise, good even shooters. It's always a pleasure to learn from Sergeant Major. He's just a wealth of knowledge there. He's been doing this a long time. It's just great to, to be able to spend this time with him and, uh, and learn from him. We bring our individual skills and our individual experiences, but even at the basic level, teamwork isn't everything we do. The sum of the team is stronger than the individual parts. 75 yards cover fire, dealing position. Throughout tag match, points are tallied for each individual guardsman and their four-person team. Many of the guardsmen chose to dedicate their own time and money to hone their skills for the competition. A lot of time and effort, a lot of practice in the last year. The main event for the four-person teams is the three-gun competition.
Our team did not make it past the second round of the three-gun event. But in the individual competition, both Sergeant Major Barnes and Staff Sergeant DeMint were awarded the Adjutant General's 20 Combat Badge. The 139th Airlift Wing Maintenance Squadron was the top overall four-person team. And the top individual overall winner for Tag Match 2016 was Staff Sergeant Michael Ritchie with the 1139th Military Police Company Combat Support. Tag Match will continue to serve the Missouri National Guard in improving marksmanship skills, team camaraderie, bragging rights, and healthy competition. I want to be better next year, every year. I want to be competitive for those, that top three, definitely. After the break, we'll see how the 1138th Transportation Company stays sharp with their truck driving skills on a drill weekend. Transportation companies are the backbone of the U.S. Army that provide ground transportation of personnel, supplies, and equipment. The Missouri National Guard's 1138th Transportation Company, based at Jefferson Barracks, regularly conducts driver's training for their motor transport operators at a training site in Weldon Spring, Missouri. During our drill weekends, the driver's training is the most important part and you depend on the people that are here in the unit to pass on their knowledge. Basically, you could read all the books in the world, but you really need the experience of driving different places and different roads, different terrain. The driver training involved backing up, making wide turns, loading the trailer, and securing loads. Throughout the month, the unit has opportunities to perform real-world missions supporting other Missouri National Guard units. In fact, we do have a mission coming up where we have personnel going down to Dexter, Missouri to pick up trucks for a follow-on mission that's going to happen later on in the week. The upside is, is we get the opportunity to do real-world missions in transportation. Come on! Bring them up! Sergeant Ross was assigned to the unit in 2011, when most of the unit was serving in Afghanistan. Shortly after, she volunteered to serve with her unit in the combat zone. It was pretty dangerous. I mean, most of our missions were at night, and we're not talking fancy paved roads. We've had to drive in extreme fog, blast holes, sideways snowing, any kind of bad thing you can think of, we, we made it through. It makes me feel grateful though, because I was able to serve my country and I have that experience now. We're like the backbone of uh, the army because without us, the vehicle cannot move. And if the vehicle can move, mission cannot be accomplished. So we're the, like the backbone of the army. That's Private First Class Patrick Adams is one of the motor transport operators that received the driver training. He is also a foreign national from Ghana serving in the Missouri National Guard. Captain Ashton has several foreign nationals that he is proud to serve with in his unit. From my experience, they've always worked hard, they always have a good attitude, and they're typically wanting to pursue the American dream. The skills honed at driver training will help prepare the 1138th Transportation Company for its upcoming annual training when the unit will convoy to Camp Rapids, South Dakota and participate in Operation Golden Coyote, a National Guard-wide exercise. One, it takes three days to get there. So they'll have three days of good driving just to get to Camp Rapids, South Dakota. In addition, our job is going to be transporting firewood from some of the national force to the Native American reservations in that area. 
it's a tactical exercise. It provides a lot of really good training, not only for transportation companies, but various other units with different specialties. The entire company gets to go together and we're gonna to train together. So we're looking forward to it. The 1138th Transportation Company will continue serving, training, and trucking. Just like the Transportation Corps motto states, nothing happens unless something moves. In this next story, we'll visit a weapons instructor course for the airmen who pilot and navigate the C-130 Hercules. Six airmen around the Air Force and Air National Guard are at Rosecrans Air National Guard Base enrolled in a five and a half month long course. The Weapon Instructor Course, or WIC, is part of the Air Force Weapons School based out of Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada. This particular WIC is designed for pilots and navigators who fly the C-130H model aircraft, the model flown by the Air National Guard. WICs are graduate level courses with an emphasis on tactics and leadership. You learn a lot of tactics, but it's, it's really a leadership course. They teach you how to think critically, and so that way when you leave here, you're, um, you're able to take a problem and solve it, whatever it is. So they, it's, very, it's a very good method, sometimes stressful method, but it's, it works. Although stationed at Rosecrans, this particular course is a detachment of the 29th Weapons Squadron and is a total force initiative. There's some uniqueness just because we've got Guard Reserve and active duty guys all working together here. Uh, but the, the entire mission is very similar to all the other weapon schools. And, and we spend a good portion of our time all together down at Nellis Air Force Base with all the other weapon schools interacting. The crews will fly multiple times a week leading up to a massive exercise that will test their integration with other types of aircraft. This is the third class since the course started at Rosecrans early last year. Reporting from St. Joseph, Missouri, I'm Tech Sergeant Michael Crane. Our final story shows how the Guard family supported one of their own through an overwhelming challenge. Throughout the Missouri National Guard, you can find soldiers who have stories of resiliency. Staff Sergeant Keith Carter is one of those soldiers. I joined in uh, May of 1999, <laughs> so it was quite a while ago. The reason I joined was because the benefits, the camaraderie, the challenges, the experience, the knowledge, all things that I knew I would gain by joining the Missouri National Guard. Sergeant Carter eventually accepted a full-time position with the Guard. The stability and benefits were ideal for the single father of two girls. He was going through life just fine when the weight of responsibility hit him like a ton of bricks, one day at the grocery store. I'm sitting here looking at food for my daughter, and then Brianna is you know, pulling on my legs, and I'm looking here and instantly, I was just like, how in the world am I gonna do this? So a, a flood of emotion came over me. I was beside myself. That was the first moment when I was like, oh my God, these two children, I'm all they have to take care of them. And that was a little overwhelming. And then I said to myself, this is just something I'm not gonna fail at. Sergeant Carter got support from soldiers in his unit and throughout the guard. They helped out with the girls when he was away on training. They helped with birthday parties and even tackled some home improvement needs his parents had as his father was recovering from heart surgery. The Guard family just grew exponentially during that time. Not because I necessarily asked it, although I did, but because people found out and they offered. And then that's what, I, that's what they do, that's what I love about the Guard. By 2007, Sergeant Carter had moved up in rank and was working as the logistics NCO for the 3175th Chemical Company. On Valentine's Day in 2011, he got word that the 3175th was being deployed to Qatar. I received a phone call from State about getting all of our equipment in to be calibrated and whatnot. And so uh, then they're like, did you hear? I'm like, what do you mean? Did I hear what? What are you talking about? And then obviously we find out, everybody finds out together. They start calling people saying, hey, this is what's going on and just filters down on the call roster and then everybody shows up. and. That's it. Although excited about his deployment and the opportunity to serve in the Middle East, Sergeant Carter did have to deal with the fact that he would be away from his two daughters, 
Brianna and Mercedes for at least a year. Mercedes had just had her trach taken out that year. So it was the first time she was able to breathe on her own. So we may have left out a big part of the story. For that, we have to go back to 2006 when Sergeant Carter's younger daughter Mercedes was born. She was born early and after two weeks at home, she stopped breathing. I immediately took her to the ER and where we were at, they couldn't handle what she had so they airlifted her to Cardinal Glennon and immediately put her on life support because she wasn't breathing on her own. She was diagnosed with subglottic stenosis and that's basically a narrowing of the airway. Her airway was basically shaped like an hourglass. It was so much labor for her to breathe her body eventually just stopped, it gave up. After multiple times of trying to take her off intubation, they said, we probably need to give her a trach. The tracheotomy was the best thing for Mercedes at the time. It allowed her to breathe on her own and she grew strong enough to eventually transition home. And that transition posed a new set of challenges for Sergeant Carter. When you're a single father and you have a special needs child and, and another and a four year old, um, something as simple as going to the grocery store is a challenge. Having a guard family to say, hey, I need help. And they say, what do you need? Can you go to the grocery store and give me a gallon of milk? Yeah, absolutely, man. What else do you need? Your immediate family, sure they're gonna say that. But to have 900, 1,000, hey, troop, what do you need? You know, sincerely. It's sometimes those smallest gestures that make the greatest impact on somebody. You know what I mean? It's just those easiest things to do. But to me, that was huge because I couldn't get out of the house. So when he got word of his deployment that Valentine's Day in 2011, Sergeant Carter knew that he was going to have to ask for even more support. It was a pretty stressful period of time in my life, but fortunately I had a lot of people to help out, um, whether it be soldiers or just my family. Like the, the girls stayed with my twin sister the entire time I was gone. So they stepped up and really took a lot of stress off of me so I could focus on actually what I was doing uh, with the unit while we deployed. Sergeant Carter was eager to serve because the guard had given him something he could never pay back. The amount of surgeries, hospital stays, in-home health care, prescriptions, doctor's visits that TRICARE paid for, the insurance that I have through the military, it's one of those things where it's like, you know what, you've done so much for me, helping me and helping my daughter sustain life, that absolutely I'll go. Send me where you want me to go. I'll go. It's the least I can do for you helping me take care of my family. During that part of my life, that was probably the hardest thing I've ever done. And if it wasn't for the people that stepped up to help me out, it probably would have had a completely different outcome. And I think a lot of soldiers out there, there's some in the same situation or even in worse situations. But it doesn't take away from the fact that there's thousands of guardsmen that at a drop of a hat would say, hey, what do you need? We're here to help you. I think a lot of times soldiers don't know where to go or they're scared to ask the question. There are resources out there. You can go through your chaplain, you can go through state, you can go through your chain of command. There's people out there that want to help you succeed and that will help you succeed. I'm very proud of him because he, he helps our city. He protects us and protects everyone else. I'm thankful for him because he's just helping the world and he's helping the country, um, making our freedom stronger. The Guard is just an amazing organization. Best thing I ever did was join the Guard besides becoming a father. It's the best thing I ever did. It is now my honor to introduce the commander of the Missouri National Guard, the Adjutant General, Major General Steve Danner. Thank you, Tech Sergeant Howells, and thank you viewers for watching this episode of MoGuard TV. In this episode, we've seen how the Missouri National Guard is an organization that is always refining its skills and improving readiness. This approach allows us to be always ready, always there. We've heard from the units under the 175th Military Police Battalion as they prepare for Exercise Anaconda this summer in Poland. We met guardsmen as they competed in the annual tag match. 
These soldiers and airmen are always looking to improve their marksmanship, whether they've been shooting for four months or 40 years. We saw how soldiers from the 1138th Transportation Company are staying up on their driving skills and are looking forward to putting them to the test during exercise Golden Coyote. Missouri is proud to host the C-130 Weapons Instructor Course as airmen in the Guard and active duty Air Force become more adept at problem solving and ultimately become better leaders. And finally, we heard the story of Staff Sergeant Keith Carter, a soldier who was able to lean on the Guard when his daughter's medical needs seemed overwhelming. The Missouri National Guard seeks to empower the organization in all that we do. There are countless other stories where Guardsmen have stepped up as leaders, team members, and friends. On behalf of Governor Jay Nixon and our nearly 12,000 soldiers and airmen, thank you for your support.